Greetings, Mr. Kolazar's class. Our last section on gases deals with the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is going to include now the number of particles along with the pressure, temperature, and volume we've done up until this point. So now we're going to include the number of particles into our equation. We're going to look at how gases with pressure, temperature, volume, and now we're going to add in, as we were saying, those number of particles. And our last step is we're going to compare real and ideal gases together. So the ideal gas law to introduce from last chapter, standard temperature and pressure, STP 0 Celsius or 273 Kelvin. And remember, we want to be in Kelvin and one atmosphere. One mole of any gas at STP equals at 22.4 liters amount. So if we have one mole of a gas, we'd have 22.4 liters. So Avogadro's number, equal molar volume of a gas, has the same temperature and pressure with equal amounts of that gas. So Avogadro's principle is going to be helping us out here at 22.4 liters. It'll help out for one mole of any gas. So our ideal gas law to this point, the pressure, volume, and temperature of one has equal the pressure, volume of temperature two. Now, what we're going to look at is that either one, pressure, volume, and temperature, since it's equal, is constant. Or pressure, volume, temperature, two is constant. So we are going to be able to insert N being the number of moles. So the number of moles is N into the equation. So pressure, volume, temperature, what we've done now is inserted N, and it's going to remain constant. So using our experiments using uh, known values of pressure, volume, N, and then T, so number of uh, moles and then temperature, have determined a constant value. And we call this the ideal gas constant. And it's going to be symbolized by the letter R. Now, the ideal gas constant is to help keep that linear relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. So the key part for it, it's going to change the R value depending only on the units of pressure. So remember that key part, our R value depends on the units of pressure. Only when volume is in liters and temperatures in Kelvin, that's standard for what we're going to be working with. So substituting in R for the ideal gas constant rearranges the ideal gas law. PV equals N over T equals a constant, so that constant is our letter R. And how we're going to write this equation generally, we're just going to move it around. PV equals NRT. So we need to make sure that this is the one that we write down. You know, this equation here, pressure times volume, is equal to the number of moles times R, the ideal gas constant, times the temperature in Kelvin. So we've got our all of our pieces to put in. This describes the physical behavior of any ideal gas in terms of pressure, volume, temperature, and the number of moles of a gas present. So if we know three, we can solve for that last part. Now this is our important part for R. Our R depends on pressure. So please make sure that you notice what pressure we are working with. Now the R value, number-wise, is here and our units for the R value are here. So if we're in atmospheres, kilopascals, or millimeters of mercury. So if you're dealing in atmospheres, there's, your number would be 0 0.0821, and your units, liters times atmospheres, over mole times Kelvin. So that would be your R value. to use if we were seeing atmospheres being used. If we use kilopascals, we're going to want to use this number. And if we're in millimeters of mercury for pressure, we're going to use this number. These three are all in your gold packet. The key part is remembering which pressure decides which unit you're going to use and number you're going to use. So let's look at number 45. In question 45, it says calculate the number of moles of ammonia gas. Calculate the number of moles 
of ammonia gas contained in a 3 liter vessel at 315 Kelvin, volume, temperature, with a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. So if we were to look, we're looking for number of moles. We have volume, temperature, and pressure. Now our question is, which R value are we going to use? Are we going to use this one? Or are we going to use this one? So if we look back through a problem, it deals with atmospheres. So this is the R value we want to use, not that one. So we know we have pressure, volume, number of moles, temperature. We're looking to solve for number of moles. So we're going to rearrange our equation to solve for N. Pressure divide, uh, times volume divided by R times temperature. Now when we plug in pressure, volume, number of moles and temperature, pressure 1.5 atmospheres times volume 3 liters divided by our R value 0 0.0821 liters times atmospheres moles Kelvin. Notice Kelvin cancels Kelvin, atmospheres cancels atmospheres, liters cancels liters, and then we're left with the mole unit. Numbers on top multiplied, numbers on bottom are divided, and it turns out about one or 0.17 moles of ammonia gas could be found. Now ammonia is NH3, so if we wanted to go a step further and actually find the mass, you know the moles, molar mass over grams from the periodic table, you could find the mass also. Or a number of moles, so we'll just stop there for now. Our second problem, what is the pressure in kilopascals of a 0 0.108 molar sample of helium gas at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius if its volume is 0 0.505 liters? So the question starts out with, we're looking for its pressure. We have number of moles. We have temperature. And we have volume. So to begin with, PV equals NRT. Our question asks, what is the pressure in kilopascals? So liters, atmospheres, moles, Kelvin, liters, kilopascals, moles, Kelvin. Want to be in the one that has the kilopascals, not one that doesn't have kilopascals. Temperature, remember, 273 plus 20. So we want to be 293 Kelvin not 20 degrees Celsius, always in Kelvin. So to rearrange our equation, pressure is equal to nRT over V. So all we've done is remove volume, divide by V, and divide by V to cancel those out. So to plug in our units, N times R times RT over V. Now we'll notice with our V, or excuse me, with our R unit, that liters cancel liters, moles cancel moles, Kelvin cancels Kelvin, and we're left with our units, kilopascals. Numbers on top are multiplied, numbers on bottom are divided, and we get about 520.97. Sig fig wise, we could round it to 521 kilopascals. So what we've done is using our ideal gas law, solving for either pressure, volume, number of moles, or temperature if we know the other three. With our R value, having to decide which R value we need to use by our units. So real life versus our ideal life. Ideal is what we've been dealing with. Real life, you know, it doesn't quite work out as easy as we like. So our ideal gas follows a few assumptions from KMT or kinetic molecular theory. You know, particles experience no attractive or repulsive forces. They're all elastic or collisions. They're in constant random motion. So to just check through a little flow chart here, ideal versus real gases. Particles experience little attractive or repulsive forces with one another. So this would be an idea for an ideal gas. Particles are in constant random motion. This fits the ideal gas and real gases. Both of them are in constant random motion. Collisions are perfectly elastic. That's in the ideal gas world. In the real world, there's a little bit of sticking, bouncing off of each other uh, that causes some attractive forces there. Gases behave 
as real gases at low temperatures and high pressures. So if we're at low temps and high pressures, they're very close together. And as they're very close together, that's going to have more attractive and repulsive forces. Um, behave as ideal gases at most temperature and pressures. Um, they're spread out a lot further, so they don't have those forces of attraction between them. And polar gases, polar gases have a little positive, a little negative to them, causes them attractive force and repulsion, so they're more likely to be real gases. So little difference between our real world and the ideal world. Um, we'll stick with the ideal ones for now. Um, it will be how we look at that versus the real world where there's some other forces and things at hand. But that will wrap up our gas chapter. We'll continue on looking and moving into solids and liquids next.